It's been kind of a slow process because for some reasons it took like a year basically to compose the songs for Eternal. I think it's a little bit different when it comes to this, the previous one, Nemesis. This one is like more straightforward, it's a little bit more old school. Yeah, I think the original idea with this album was to go a little bit back to the power metal thing, you know, more faster and, and songs that would work well live. I describe it as a new version of this experiment that we are doing now with the band. I kind of have a feeling that we kind of renewed our sound quite much on this record. There is some quite unusual songs that you probably haven't heard before in our records. There are songs from Laura Jens, Matthias, me and also Jani Liimatan. He's been helping me by composing. We compose I think three songs together and we wrote also lyrics for Matthias songs. So there's basically five guys involved. And uh, of course then again, Rolf did a lot of arrangements in, in the studio with Matthias while they were recording drums. So basically everybody had some input on the album. This is like really wide palette of different kinds of songs. I feel that Eternal will be kind of natural evolution about what started from Polaris album. A little bit less Symphonic and a little bit more power metal, if I judge from the from the bulk of the songs how they how they feel to me. Uh, but of course, it's still very complicated. You know, it's not like very very simple power metal. It's some of it is quite progressive. So I would say it's like a very power metal oriented progressive uh, rock record, like melodic. So the variety of the songs are like it's like this one. It's like there's some fast stuff, but then there can be a ballad. Even though we have like five different composers. Still on the album, it sounds Stradivarius, so which is, which is a good thing. Na pa do da na na put it da ya do da. We are the hope of a world in despair. Hey hey. You can instantly hear where is the roots. You can hear it like where it, where it comes from. You know in like one microsecond that it's it's all about Stradivarius. There's more reflections from the uh, past out of various albums. Some parts are more power metal, but then again, some parts of Eternal might be more like more modern metal as well. Uh, I think it's a it's a sort of logical continuation on on uh, what we did before, and it's a logic album to do after Nemesis, I think. There's a little bit for everybody, I think. There's like some really complex things, some really fast playing, some super power metal anthemy type of things. Some really epic stuff. Matthias wrote this like super long song. Uh, I think it's gonna call it like Lost Saga. I th that's the the longest song. Nearly 11, 12 minutes or something of pure metal kind of shredding and lots of cool double bass, feels lots of progressive influences in the same package. This one, Matthias told me that he wants to have like, you know, blood and Vikings and some, you know, history and, you know, war and stuff like Most that. Things like what I haven't done with this session, but I... I would say that maybe Eternal is a little bit like a combination 
of this Elysium kind of Stradivarius and Nemesis and then something completely new. It also had some really nice kind of really old school Stradivarius stuff going on. Hit in the face kind of. Hold it. several things in my setup for this album. First of all, I added one rack tom to my setup. I just wanted to like play maybe more like feel oriented stuff and like longer feels and stuff. So that was the reason for that third rack tom. And also like there's some really <laughs> challenging drum parts in some songs. I just wanted to kind of challenge myself as a player, so I kind of composed this a little bit too hard drumming parts. It takes time to find the, the right angle to each song. Of course I can just go and sing the notes, but I want to get the best out of all of the songs, like of course everybody else. But to me it's important to have a nice environment where to record the vocals and no time pressure. The recording bass was same as last time. I bought a bunch of basses and different pedals and different amps in the studio. And then we try with Matthias all these combinations and end up using the exact same we've always used because it seems to work the best for me. We always try to find something else and then, ah, it's pretty good. Let's try the original. <laughs> oh, okay. We're doing the, the original. I developed a few things a bit further from the last album. Which, which is like some patches and some, some stuff I have been working on for many years actually to get this convincing choir patch because it's such a fundamental part of this music in a way or it has become in a way like probably it's also a little bit my fault uh, for overusing this type of sound so I've been working a lot on this patch to get the note transitions uh, more smooth now there's like lots of guitar solos with harmony. It makes also this album sound a little bit more like this 95 kind of 96 kind of like old school power metal stuff when they used to do this kind of like guitar harmony stuff a lot. The first thing is like I connect my guitar here and then I take the line signal out and then after this it goes like to this JD7 this radial thing, which is a basically like big splitter box. And after that, I can choose like where to put it. Like mm, sometimes I'm using like pedals before the mesas or like before the fractal or martial or popper. And then it goes like there to this, this uh, live room, the cabinets and the microphones. You can see it here. Right. Power metal demo seven wreck. This is the song. <laughs> I think the only one who is trying to put some effort into this name is just like Timo. Jens has this like LBQKTR, that's the name of the songs. And uh, Lauri has like Demo 1 and Demo A. Like, what the fuck? Then I have like Power Metal Demo 7, Demo 4, Demo like 2, and it's like all about the numbers and demos. So. Well, for me, the album title is not really at all important. But of course, you have to have you have to have some sort of name for the collection of songs that you record because you record them always in a batch of an hour or so. Uh, so for me, it was not important. We went through a lot of suggestions. Normally, we'd be working like we have the songs and then we have the title and then we have some kind of idea about the cover artwork. But this time it was funny, well not funny but different because um, we actually had the uh, album artwork a year ago. We've been using the same guy, uh, Gula, who um, also did the last three album covers for us. And we, we told him that we would like to have this majestic thing 
and uh, then he came up with this eternal picture but at that point we didn't have the uh, name yet everybody was like just drawing some some stuff there like we just it was again like facebook chat oh what should we call it everybody chatting and then we were thinking okay we have these song titles and this kind of music what would fit album artwork and the music and then we came up with with the name eternal and then we have like one song called eternal dream so i think that goes like pretty well hand in hand and this eternal dream also like kind of sums up the direction of this album then of course we have this kind of a well a start of our thing with seven letter uh, you know album titles so then i think in the end it was probably Laura who came up with this eternal we had like several suggestions and everybody was like thinking okay what what would be a perfect album name and then we got this eternal and uh, of course we hope that our music is eternal hopefully it lives on and on the album is Stradivarius eternal because Stradivarius is eternal and uh, that's the unit You know what to do. You need to check out our eternal music. It's fun album. Fantastic. It's eternal and it's Stradivarius. It's gonna ring eternally in your ears, so beware. Check it out.